Hey guys, what's up? How are you guys doing? I'm Doris Bonita. If you're stumbling on my channel for the first time and I love you. <laughs> How are you guys doing anyway? I'm so glad to have a sit down today. I would like to talk about relationships and seasons, actually, seasons in friendship. This is a very, very important topic. Most of the time, we tend to neglect friendship, take like some relationship more seriously than the others. And unfortunately, some of the relationships that are neglected is friendships and family relationships which are the very very most important kind of relationships don't get it twisted of course having a relationship like romantic relationships are important but also friendship and family are one of the very very important kind of relationship in every human being's life and today i'm not going to really base on that side you know explain about the importance of friendship and all that we will do that maybe some other time or oh, we can do it anyway let's just do it we'll end up all right just push yourself test yourself figure out what you like and find your limits don't be rigid always work towards a prime surround yourself with open minds people can change there are certain characteristics oh my goodness the sun is very hot i'm trying to hide, hide myself and my t-shirt is also white so allow me to do this <laughs> yes a uh, friendship let me just mention this real quick anyway friendships are very important because they play a very big role in decision making and the people that you surround yourself with also determine what happens to you we see that in the bible about this man who was who who received healing from jesus because the friend brought him from the roof and jesus said because of the friend's faith that man is healed so it means if you have the wrong friends also bad things can happen to you and we see that also scripture says that bad company corrupts good morals and i think you can even relate it in real life honestly if you have friends who are gossips you end up also gossiping because whoever you spend time with you carry their characters you know you start doing the things that they are doing if a person has a good influence if they love god you also find yourself loving god if they are moral you also just find yourself wanting to do this thing so friendships are very important it can be also a good connection you know for the next job or another opportunity if you have this this uh, kind of relationship this kind of friendships and most of the time those friendships last Jesus had his disciples because the disciples were actually his friends. He was always with them. He taught them. He trained them. And at the end of it, they carried the legacy of Jesus. And because of what they did, because we enjoyed from the overflow of what they had with Jesus, we are now saved and because of them because of this the bible the books that they wrote in the bible the message that they wrote from their being with christ we have also received salvation so friendship is not just about you it's also about generations to come and that's why we have to be careful with the kind of friendships that we keep now let's talk about seasons in friendship. This is something that I learned from Apostle Joshua Selman. I knew about it, but I also just learned a lot from Apostle Joshua Selman where he was just talking about um, the seasons, understanding the seasons, you know, people in the kind of relationships and the seasons in your life because in every season god has someone for you 
someone that he wants you to walk with, someone that will support you. Not everyone is supposed to walk with you in all seasons. Let's go back. I love Jesus. I mean, you guys know that. If you follow me, you do know that I'm a Jesus babe. I'm owned by him, literally. And his life is always my reference because he's the perfect one. And he is the one who came to show us the standard to which we should live with. You see that Jesus had 12 disciples, but there are some seasons of his life where he would only have three. And there are some times, according to the Bible, he would only have his one, John, his beloved disciple. Sometimes he would have even more, the 72, 120, and other multitudes. But it reached a point of separation where he would also go alone. So exactly how the life of Jesus was, that's how the life of a believer looks like or should look like. There are some seasons you will need to be alone. There are some seasons you will have people and you need to have discernment to understand these things. I'm going to attach that someone with Apostle Joshua Salman if I find it and you will just hear what he said concerning understanding the seasons in your life. Sometimes we tend to hold on to past relationships. You know, sometimes you are not even close to a person, but the person helped you so they feel like they own you or for the rest of their life, people want to keep friendship, you know, friendships. I'm one person who is not a very big fan and I'm not a very quick person to call a person my friend. Because for me, friendship is commitment. We have to have the same mind. We are heading the same direction. For friendship must have purpose for it to grow. Just like any other. Just like a marriage that has a purpose is more like, most likely to thrive than a marriage that people just got married because they love each other. And that's why as a Christian, again, that's a topic for another time. You don't marry for love. Love is important, but it's not the priority. It's the purpose that God has for you and your partner. The purpose that God has for your marriage. That means you need to find out the purpose of your marriage for you to know who you are supposed to work with. And these are some of the things that God reveals to you as you walk with him. Friendships also have purposes and you need to understand. And if you're not, you notice that you're not walking the same direction with this person, just cut them off or take a pause because there's nothing as dangerous as that. Signs that your the friendship season is over. You find that the things that were good have become toxic or bad you are um, the unnecessary fighting sometimes yes it's an attack from the devil but sometimes it's just a sign that the season is over and god is usually communicating that's why you need to pray even over your interactions and friendships one prayer i told god this year and it's something that i, prob I probably just told one person about it recently that one of the, the 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 points one of my desires this year is that was that i want god to reveal to me the people that are supposed to be in my life and those that are not supposed to be in my life of course for me if anything is coming between if any in fact let me repeat this if anything or anyone is coming between my relationship with Jesus, honey, you don't belong with me. I don't care who you are. I cut you. Anything that comes between my relationship with Jesus, anyone, I don't care who you are. If you are drawing me away from God, I don't care how long we've been together. I don't care. Like I am loyal to you. As long as God allows me.
But the moment he tells me, or I get the signs of him communicating to me about, you know, the person that is affecting our relationship, me and him, I don't care who you are. I'll cut you off, really. Very quick, quicker than you even saw it coming. Because for me, my priority is Jesus. He's all that matters to me. Just like Minister Theophilus Sunday sang, no glory in this world, no greatness here for me. It's the same for me. I don't care. Like, I don't care about anything outside Jesus Christ for me. He's all that matters. He's my reward. And if anything I desire or anything I have, if any relationship messes with that, I just can't. I can't with you anymore. So sometimes you find that some relationships will start very well, but as time goes by, there's this strain. You have to be able to detect when it's an attack and when it's a warning from God. Some of the sign is you will find that you are quarreling all the time. You know, you are having issues all the time. You, um, for example, a godly friendship. You are not even praying together anymore. You are straining. It's like you, you've become enemies of each other. You are correcting each other. But every time one party feels like they are being attacked by the other, so you find that what was good becomes toxic. If you feel like you are being drained when you are with this person, instead of being edified, you're being drained. You are sad. You know, you're even becoming more sad. You're becoming weary. You know, the things that this, like the person becomes a baggage then it's a sign that their season in your life is over. Sometimes God will just cause something to happen to remove them. They can just decide to go themselves. Sometimes it's a sign and you have to detect when it's actually time, when the season is over. So don't insist on relationships that their season in your life is over relationships that are not being productive anymore but instead they are becoming strenuous on you you are straining you're emotionally drained you're spiritually drained because of this person you are physically drained because of this person Another thing is when you're not heading in the same direction, when you have to compromise your values or the things that God has spoken to you for this person, the season is over. Don't insist on staying there. I do have a problem with people who try to... You see, there are some people who feel like they helped you. For example, I will use my own self as an example. I vied in university in KU, main campus. I had supporters, a lot of people. I didn't even know people were loyal to me. But I do have a feeling that some people still hold on to that. But like, I'm not that person anymore, you know. I don't have to be friends with you. If you need help, just tell me what you need. I'll do that, but I'm not your friend. And the fact that you consider me your friend, I don't have to consider you my friend. There's a distorted way of my country people, how they see friendship. For them, they just met you now. As long as they spoke to you, you got along. They start calling you a friend. I had a problem with my sisters because of that. I've always been like this. Like I don't really call just anyone a friend. I'm very skeptical about friendship because friendship is commitment. You literally lay down your life for that person. So it has to be God ordained. It has to be something that you bought and don't force me to be your friend if i am not interested or forcing conversations and all that we the truth is we are not meant for each other like not everyone is meant for you 
and not everyone is meant for you in all seasons of your life there are some that will be there for you for a certain period of time but they are not supposed to be with you for your lifetime and there are those people that have been called to be in your life in your whole life in your whole time in the in all of your life so not everyone has to stay and just because you love me i don't have to love you back just because i love you you don't have to love me back just because you like me i don't have to like you back that those are some of the things that people just need to get and stop forcing issues because the more you force you keep on hurting each other and just because you are not the person is not reciprocating what you are giving them it doesn't mean you have to help them you just have to understand that you're different people and these people are not meant to be in your life and that's okay i find some people who try to reach out to me which is not a problem but i have a problem when you try to force a friendship you know like people would try to video call you call you and you feel like this pressure i mean honestly speaking for me personally i'm introverted more introverted some people don't believe that but i am introverted and i really just i mean i don't like people but i love people because of god if you notice that liking has to do with feelings and love has to do with commitment so i love people with the love of god but i don't like people i'm one person like today i've been in the house the whole day and i'm okay i will just be dancing here if i want to go out for a walk like not being around people doesn't bother me and even interactions drain me so having a person pestering you with calls and all that and you just because maybe they supported you or because they knew you back then so they feel like ah we have to reconnect we don't have to my dear i'm sorry but we don't have to you don't have to reconnect with everyone understand people understand the seasons in people's life understand that there are some people you used to be friends with that you are no longer friends with and that is okay that season is over don't force yourself over a friendship of high school or primary school i just understand that the season is over don't push it if god wanted those people to be in your life they would stay in your life and if he wants them to be he will return them but don't push it when the season is over it will save you a lot of energy you know it will save you a lot of strength a lot of stresses and a lot of thinking evil about other people because someone would feel that's what we call entitlement someone would feel that feeling of entitlement that they have why are they not feeling the same way i'm feeling because i'm not you and you're not me so these are some of the unapologetic truths that people have to understand that not everyone is meant to be in your life forever you have to make peace with that and there are seasons and you have to make that prayer as often as possible so i hope you all have learned something please subscribe like comment and share and see you in my next video bye